1400 AM, Clarksville, Tennessee. WBWB, 1400 AM, Clarksville, Tennessee. This is Grace and Truth. Your host for the next hour is Jason Sage. Grace and Truth airs live on Tuesdays at noon on WJZM 1400 AM. We would love for you to post a Bible question to our Facebook page, Grace and Truth 1400. Our phone lines are open at 931-645-6414. All right, welcome into the show. Thank you for being with us. My name is Jason Sage. I'm the minister with the North 2nd Street Church of Christ here in Clarksville, Tennessee. Ordinarily, you can get to us by coming through the Arby's parking lot on Riverside Drive, but they're fancy in that joint up, man. They, I think it's going to be gold plated now. I think it's going to be the Trump Arby's. It's going to be classy all the way. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. Do they? They're they're doing a facelift to the Arby's there on Riverside Drive. So when you go to get your roast beef sandwich, you'll know it's a little bit different place. But anyway, you're welcome to come see us. Our building is kind of behind there. Uh, if you know where North 2nd Street hits Riverside Drive, there's a McDonald's, a Napa Auto Parts, and then us. So go fix your car, uh, get a little something to eat, and then come see us. Worship God with us at North 2nd Street. That's what we're looking for. This is called the Grace and Truth Radio Show, and we have a lot coming your way today. Uh, we're going to talk about a topic that uh, seems like we talk about quite a bit on the show, but it's one of those things that you can't avoid in this world around us, and that is the idea of uh, Christian literature uh, Christian books, maybe even the Bible themselves, being outlawed. The idea that you cannot declare things sin anymore is becoming illegal. We'll talk about that coming up in our News of the World segment. Also, we're going to talk about the idea of integrity and faithfulness. Integrity and faithfulness, all that coming up on the show. So be with us. As always, we would love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook. We are at Grace and Truth 1400. On Facebook, we are Grace Truth 1400 on the tweeter machine and you can call us the old-fashioned way 931-645-6414 we would love to hear from you all that coming up on the show love to hear from you love to have a bible question get to us any way you can but now i say but now <laughs> maybe I, I can't do the baseline if i were Michael Winslow, the guy from the Police Academy movies, I would be able to do my own music, but what do we think? We're going to abandon ship. Oh, here we go. Hey, hey. <laughs> the miracles of technology. It's time to go to Galatians chapter 4 and find out what's good about not being under the law. Something good for today comes from the book of Galatians chapter 3. I, I said, I got all excited. See, mistakes are just abundant today. Galatians chapter 3, are you excited that you are not under the law of Moses? Now, this is not probably the kind of thing that you think of on a regular basis. But for the early Christians, this was a big, big deal. And for us, as modern-day Christians, it should be a big, big deal. Because to understand that our righteousness is not achieved by law-keeping is one thing, but it's a whole other thing to understand all of the requirements uh, that came with keeping the law of Moses. If you've not read the book of Leviticus, the book of Deuteronomy, or even uh, the latter half of the book of Exodus recently, then you don't know how onerous and how burdensome the law of Moses was. For one thing, if you were an Israelite uh, and you were a male, you had to go to the, Jerusalem three times a year uh, for Easter, Pentecost, and the Feast of Booths. Uh, that alone uh, would rack up some frequent flyer miles in this day and time. The sacrifices that were entailed, all the different variations of uh, dietary restrictions, and on and on and on and on. So what does the Bible tell us about that? What does the New Testament tell us about that? It tells us two things. A, we are not under the law, but we are not free to sin. All that time, all that effort, all those things that we don't have to do anymore, we are free to do good works. Now, here's what Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 23. It says, Now, before faith came, 
we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian unto Christ, until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer un are under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Now, there's a lot in that verse or in those verses that I'm not going to unpack right now. But here's what I want you to get today. We are free from the law, but we are not free from the law so that we're free to sin. We are free from the law so that we are free to do good works, to love one another, to be more like Christ every day. We don't have to do all those things, but there are so many beautiful things that we can do. We're free to study. We're free to worship. If you think about it, Christianity is, is a very portable religion. If you think about the Israelites being tied to the temple and tied to the Mount Zion of Jerusalem, the, the, that, could not, that religion could not spread across the world in the way that Christianity can. Our faith is very simple. The requirements for becoming a Christian are, are incredibly simple. Knowledge and faith of Jesus Christ. Faith that he is Jesus. Faith that he is the Son of God. Faith that he is the Christ. Faith that God raised him from the dead and he ascended into heaven and he's at the right hand of God, Lord and Master of all. That he has a kingdom and that you need to enter. That's basically all you need to know about Jesus. But you have to have enough faith in Christ to give your life to him. A life of service and a life of good works. Walking in faith. Believing in Jesus Christ. Being not conformed to this world but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is Christianity. And that is something that knows no borders. It knows no ethnicity. It knows no kingdom. It is good news to every creature that has been or will ever be born. The truth of Jesus Christ, the salvation through faith in Jesus Christ that comes from the message of the gospel. That's our good news today. Let's get out there and do something good. When, when we read that Old Testament and we realize what a burden it is, Let's remember that Jesus paid the price for our forgiveness on those on that behalf. And let us understand that we should serve him every day. Let's do good to our neighbor. Let's encourage our fellow Christian. Let's worship God when we can. And let's appreciate that we have been set free, not for evil, but for good works. Good works. It's our something good for today. May God bless you in your walk with him. Stay with us. We've got a lot more coming up on the show today, including a look at the news of the world coming up in a couple of seg segments, but right, but coming up next, I try to say, we're going to talk about integrity. Why does the world need it today? Why do I need it today? That's coming up next on Grace and Truth. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. In 50 feet, turn left. Why are you driving so slowly? After a few drinks, I'm taking it slow. Well, you're not fooling the cop behind you. What? Get ready to pay in point one miles. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. In the Bible, the word for church simply means a group of people. The Church of Christ that meets on North 2nd Street in Clarksville is just that. We're a group of people spreading the love of Jesus, worshiping God, and seeking Him through His Spirit-revealed Word. Our Bible studies are simple and offered for all ages. Our worship is intended to praise God and encourage His saints. Our worship starts at 10 and 5 on the Lord's Day. Find out more at NorthSecondCofC.org. Find the love of Jesus at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Hey, let me ask you something. Would you seat your three-year-old child on a windowsill? Would you seat them beside a lit fireplace or by the deep end of a pool? One last question. 
Would you seat your child in a car seat that's not correct for them? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Secure their future. Seat them in the correct car seat. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Grace and Truth is on Twitter. Follow us at Grace Truth 1400. All right, welcome back into the show. Thank you for being with us. This is Grace and Truth Radio, a different kind of Christian radio show. We are coming to you from WJZM WVWB 1400 in Clarksville, Tennessee. Our show airs live on Tuesdays at noon. If you're listening to us on Sunday morning, that means you're listening to a rebroadcast of the show on WVWF 105.1 The Wolf. However you get to us, we appreciate that you're listening to us. Even if you find us on uh, YouTube or Facebook, however you get to the show, uh, we are excited to have you. We would love to hear from you. Post a Bible question on our Facebook page, Grace and Truth 1400, or hit us on Twitter at Grace Truth 1400, or you can call the show, 931-645-6414. Still coming up in the show, in our News of the World segment, we're going to take a look at how the state of California is trying to ban any book or service, including counseling, uh, by a preacher, minister, or a counselor that would change sexual behavior that's coming up in a little bit you don't want to miss that but right now let's talk about integrity we live in a world i think that needs integrity more than ever one of the things that you hear people say a lot is we need more god in this world we need more god in this country we've taken god out of schools and all those things well that is right by the way uh, and and i'm not always for uh, a lot of the religious programs in schools that a lot of other people are for because my view on that is, well, who's going to teach my child about Jesus Christ? Is it going to be a Presbyterian, a Baptist, a Catholic, a, a Roman Orthodox, or is it going to be a member of the Church of Christ? So I'm, I'm a little skeptic, skeptical of those things, but the basic idea that we've taken prayer out of schools, we've eliminated the Bible, we've eliminated any talk of the basic principles of God, I think has damaged our society. And what has happened is, when we take God out of our life, then who is there before to have integrity? Here's what I mean by that. If there is no God, then what, where's my standard of right and wrong? There's a famous quote, and I tried to track it down this morning. I couldn't find an attribution for it. It says this. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking. Now, that's a very good definition. Because what that means is I do right or wrong because of my own internal compass. And that eternal compass is set on the true north of Jehovah God. Because I believe that God is real, and I believe that God sees, and I believe that my sin is against God foremost, then that keeps me from doing things. Because when I'm not alone, I'm not alone. When a Christian is alone, is alone God is with him in more than one sense. So that's what drives integrity. If I don't have that sense of God, if I don't have this sense of right or wrong that is uh, outside of shame or outside of personal consequence, but I believe something is right or it is wrong because it fits with the design of God, then I won't have any personal integrity. And I think that's what we see uh, in our country abroad. And it makes me think of Psalm 53, uh, verses 1 and 2. And these exact words are in two different psalms. Uh, in David's book. I want to read them to you. And the, you may not think that they apply, but I, I, I would argue that they do. Here we go. Psalm 53, verse 1 says this. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, doing abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand who seek after God. Now, really, we have three things I want to point out in this verse. The idea is that a fool says there is no God, and that's what we are doing as a society. We are rushing headlong toward a society that says there is no God, or there is no real God, or there is no truth about God. And what happens is corruption, iniquity. It should not surprise us that morally this country has changed. Shamefully, what goes on in our politics has just become ridiculous in the last 20 or 30 years. 
what good religious people, seemingly good religious people, will accept uh, from their political leaders astounds me every single day. And it's not just exclusive to one party or the other. What is accepted uh, from entertainers is ridiculous. What is accepted uh, from all manner of public figures is, is just abominable. And it's because we live in a world that says there is no God. Now, verse 2 it says that God looks down from heaven. Do you believe that? Do you, be, do you believe that God knows what you do? Do you believe that God has a standard for right or wrong and that you are right or wrong not because you will get caught, not because someone will know, not because your mama or daddy might know, I, I talk a lot about Clarksville, Tennessee, the city in which I live, and I choose to live here. I love Clarksville. But I've always said nobody's mama is from here. And I tell you what I mean by that. If you go back to about 1965, I believe Clarksville is around 15 to 20,000 people. So now we're at, what, 130, 150,000, something like that. Well, those people, the, them people ain't from here, including me. My mama's from Charlotte. So what happens is we have a lot of people who live here who don't fear their mom or dad finding out what they're doing. Well, it's not our mom or dad we should fear, although, a hey, please fear your mother and father. It's God. Integrity is about God. Integrity is about knowing what is right or wrong before God. A couple of verses. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Ephesians 4, 25 through 28. Stealing and lying are wrong. A person who steals or lies has no integrity. A person who steals or lies says there is no God. And that leads to abomination and to corruption. As Christians, we live and stand by these standards, whether anyone's looking or not. Whether it will cost us anything, whether we think we'll be shamed about it at all, we do it because that's what God says is right. A Christian does not want to lie. A Christian will take the consequences for the truth. A Christian does not want to steal because he loves you as his neighbor. A Christian does not want to steal because it is wrong before God. That is true integrity. Two things. Not only does the world need it, but we need to show it. Yes, the world needs integrity, but there are two ways in which we need to show it. A, by what we approve of. If I approve of an entertainer or a public figure or a politician who steals and lies that I'm in league with that activity. Book of Romans tells that, the last verse of chapter 1. The same thing goes for stealing. Right now in this world, we live in a corporate environment where stealing is, is absolutely accepted. Where the corporate barons of this country will do wrong things knowing they can just pay the fine. Well, you don't do wrong things because you know you can pay the fine, and you don't do right things because you fear the fine. You do right things because you have integrity. You do right things because there is a God. You do right things because stealing is wrong. You do right things because lying is sinful. If there's anything we need in our churches, in our personal lives, and yes, in our country, it is more integrity it is standing by those principles that no matter the situation, lying is wrong. No matter the situation, stealing is wrong. No matter the situation, sexual immorality is wrong. And that leads us to our next point. As Christians, we must have standards based on the reality of the existence of God, our faith in and our fear of Him, our reverence in which we hold God and an understanding that he decides what is right and wrong in our life. And if it's right or wrong in my life, it's right or wrong whether I'm in public or in private. That's what integrity is. Stay with us. We're going to talk about having integrity 
having principles, having morals within our sexual life, within our marriage life. Come back with us. Let's talk about the faithfulness of God as we come back with more grace and truth. Most people want the bad news first. So here it is. We have all sinned and deserve the wrath of God. But the good news is Jesus shed his blood and paid the price for our salvation. God gave us a sign of eternal life by raising him from the dead. His resurrection proves he's the Son of God, Christ my Lord. Come to him in faith. Be born again of water and the Spirit. Serve him and he will save you. That is the message of God. We are his servants at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Find out more at northsecondcfc.org. You must have thrown a thousand pitches teaching him to hit a home run. Spent countless Saturdays running routes so he could learn to hit an open receiver. Endless afternoons teaching him how to hit the three-pointer. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Teaching boys that all violence against women is wrong is one of the most important things a man can do. Learn how to start the conversation at teachearly.org. Brought to you by Futures Without Violence and the Ad Council. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the $25,000 to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. Chances are there'll never be an emergency ever again. But just in case, let's talk about a plan. Okay. Who is going to grab the go bag? What's a go bag? It is a bag we do not have that is filled with things we really, really need in an emergency. Guess we won't have to worry about it then. Well, this is great. <laughs> I am so glad that we don't have a plan. I know. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Grace and Truth with your host, Jason Sage. Grace and Truth airs live on Tuesdays from noon to 1 on WJZM 1400 AM. We would love for you to post a Bible question to our Facebook page, Grace and Truth 1400. Our phone lines are open at 931-645-6414. All right, welcome back into the show. Thank you for being with us. This is Grace and Truth Radio, still coming up on the show today in our News of the World segment, why California is trying to ban religious books, uh, why that is wrong, and what you need to know about it. That's coming up in a little bit. But we are continuing our discussion on personal integrity. And we talked about in the last segment that is integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking. And we talked about the idea that stealing is wrong, lying is wrong, and they're wrong regardless. They're wrong whether you're in front of your church, a fellow church member, whether you're in front of your mom or dad, or whether you're in front of uh, some stranger, because they are wrong before God, and God is everywhere. And only the fool would say in his heart, there is no God. And yes, in our society today, we live in a society that essentially says there is no God, and therefore the integrity of our society uh, is, uh, is uh, well, you know where it's going in a handbasket. So that's all I'm saying. So what I wanted to talk about at this point is what are their principles, uh, what other principles should we uphold? So Christians should not lie because there is a God. Christians should not steal because there is a God. And Christians should be faithful because God is faithful. And I think this is one of the most difficult things to get across to Christians today, particularly young people today, because where our world has gone with sexual morality is so far afield uh, from what God wants. And I want to start by defining uh, a, a King James kind of term. Uh, there are two different terms in our Greek uh, New Testaments and in our English New Testaments uh, for the idea of sexual sin. In most modern translations, you'll have the word sexual immorality or adultery. In the King James Version of the Bible, you'll have the word fornication. And one of the best definitions I ever heard from that, I, I still have this Bible today. It's a a New King James Encyclopedic uh, Index that refers to fornication as sex relations among the unmarried. If you've ever heard me give this sermon at North Second Street or really anywhere, I will always use that definition because I think it is so succinct and so perfect. Fornication 
or sexual immorality is sex relations among the unmarried. In other words, it is sinful for me to have sexual relations with someone to whom I am not married. It is sinful for you to have sexual relations with someone to whom you're not married. That broad definition is fornication. It can apply to the single person. It can apply to the married person. Now, to the married person, to have sexual relations with someone to whom I'm not married, that is adultery, and that's a slightly different definition. Adultery applies to the person who is married, who has sexual relations with someone else who's not their spouse. So fornication, if you're into Venn diagrams like I am, uh, your Venn diagram, your larger bubble there, your, your larger set of, sin, of sin, uh, sinful activity, can't even say the word, uh, your larger set is fornication or sexual immorality. Within that, fornication amongst married people uh, is adultery. So those two sins are sinful. They are wrong. They are not to be engaged in, period. Let me say that again. Those two things, sexual immorality and adultery, are sinful. They are not to be engaged in, period. No more that I'm to engage in stealing or lying at all. They are wrong before God. There is a God. He looks down from heaven and he sees the children of man. They are not only wrong because they do not love our neighbor as myself. They are wrong because they are sin before God. And we as a country and we as Christians and we as uh, individual churches need to uphold the standard and tell our young people that these things are sin. And then secondarily to that, we need to live that out in our life. Because children will not get this message, for, for that matter, adults will not get this message from popular media. Do, do we want our children to follow after politicians? Do we want them to follow after popular singers or popular movie, movie actors or other people that are in the public eye? Almost 100% no. They won't learn those principles there. They will only learn them from the Bible. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 says this. Now the works of the flesh, and those are sinful, by the way. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, you may have fornication in there in your Bible. Impurity, sensuality. Adultery and sexual, and sexual immorality are sinful before God. What they display is a lack of integrity. What they display is a lack of faithfulness. And perhaps this is why, more than any other reason, they are anathema and sinful before God. God is faithful. If God enters into a covenant, you can bet that he will keep his part. When someone enters into a marriage relationship, they enter into a covenant to remain faithful to their spouse. If they have integrity, they will remain, like God, faithful. If they do not, they sin because in that sense, they are not godly. Let me read to you from Malachi chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. Malachi chapter 2, verses 13 through 16. And notice how many times the word faithful or faithless comes up in this reading. And this second thing you do, you cover the Lord's altar with tears, with weeping and groaning because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. Now, you have to understand this within the concept of the people of Israel. Uh, this is a prophet of God to the people of Israel. God is no longer blessing them because they have slipped over into idolatry. So that's what he's being referred to there in verse 13. Now, verse 14, but you say, why does he not? Because the Lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth to whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and wife by covenant. Did he not make them one with a portion of the Spirit in their union? And what was the one God seeking? Godly offspring. So guard yourselves in your spirit and let none of you be faithless to the wife of your youth. For the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord, the God of Israel, covers his garment with violence says the Lord of hosts, so guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. 
There's a lot to unpack in that. God's marriage is a covenant relationship. It is between a man and a woman. To engage in sexual relations outside of that covenant relationship is sin. If I engage in sexual immorality before I'm married, I bring things into my covenant relationship with my wife that should not be there. The traces and memories of other women, the traces and memories of other men, perhaps even sexually transmitted diseases, biases, comparisons. Pornography does the same thing by objectifying my wife or my husband and placing them in the, in the, in the uh, place of a pornographic actress, male or female. I'm turning them into an object. And I'm confusing the sexual relationship into which I'm trying to enter with my spouse. So that is sin. It is sin to be unfaithful to my spouse once I become married. And God says, you know why? Because I'm looking for children with integrity. I'm looking for godly offspring. And you cannot raise godly offspring if you display no integrity. A man who lies and steals and is unfaithful to his wife will not raise children of God. A woman who lies and steals and is unfaithful to her husband will not raise children of God. And yes, I understand that each of us is faith, as, uh, responsible before God for our own behavior. Please, please don't misunderstand. But the principles of faithfulness will not be installed. The principles of integrity will not be dis installed in a generation raised by parents who have no integrity and no faithfulness. You think teachers don't see this in the school system every day? You think ministers and Bible class teachers don't see it every day? Do you think for a moment that we're not reaping the whirlwind in our society every day? Because we live in a society where integrity means nothing where lying is laughed at, where stealing is shrugged at, where unfaithfulness is considered, oh, just part of society. Brothers and sisters, that's not crucifying the flesh. Brothers and sisters, that's not speak seeking after the spirit that's engaging in the flesh. May it never be. Now, we can't change the world. I can't change what Hollywood does. I can't change what politicians do. I can't change what everybody in the public eye, how they behave and what they say. But I tell you what I can change. I can change Jason Sage. I can live with integrity. Doesn't mean I'll never fail. I can live faithful to my wife, and I can do that. You can do that. It is a goal that can be accomplished. God has given us that covenant relationship. We can be faithful to one another. We can walk in integrity. It may not change the world, but it will change my family. I can raise godly children. Yes, they will make decisions on their own, whether they're raised by godly parents or sinful ones. The children raised by sinful parents can make godly decisions just as surely as the children raised by godly parents can make sinful decisions but they will be brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That is a choice I can make, walking in integrity and being faithful like God is faithful. Let's all pledge to do it. Lord, please be with us. Strengthen us. Help us to feel your presence in all circumstances. Help us to walk rightly before you. Please bless us with faithful marriages and integrity of spirit. May we be more like you every day. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, stay with us. Lots more coming up on the show, including let's go to California and find out why the government out there is trying to ban books about Christianity. That's coming up next with more Grace and Truth. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance an adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. It feels like you're frozen, petrified. 
You're struggling with your mortgage payments. The bills begin to pile up. Not knowing what to do, you do nothing at all. And that's the worst thing you can do. Because if you take action, if you do something about your mortgage problems, you're far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call 888-995-HOPE to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Call 888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov and do something about your mortgage problems. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. In the Bible, the word for church simply means a group of people. The Church of Christ that meets on North 2nd Street in Clarksville is just that. We're a group of people spreading the love of Jesus, worshiping God, and seeking Him through His Spirit-revealed Word. Our Bible studies are simple and offered for all ages. Our worship is intended to praise God and encourage His saints. Our worship starts at 10 and 5 on the Lord's Day. Find out more at north2ndcofc.org. Find the love of Jesus at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. and Truth is on Facebook. Ask a Bible question at Grace and Truth. All right, welcome back to the show. John Michaels and I in here solving the world's problems uh, one by one. We've got it all figured out. This is Grace and Truth Radio. My name is Jason Sage. We're glad that you're along for the ride today. Thank you for being with us on the show. We'd love to hear from you if you have a Bible question. I actually check our Facebook page uh, during the show. It's called Grace and Truth 1400. If you have a Bible question, comment, whatever the case may be. We would love to hear from you. In fact, if you post a question or a comment on the Facebook page, uh, we will faithfully answer it on the very next show. So if we don't catch it in show, uh, get in touch with us, and we'll make sure we answer your question on the air. We want to interact with you. That's the whole point of the show. All right, let's go and see what's going on out there in the wide world of sports. This is News of the World. Your weekly reminder of why God says, do not love the world. All right, here we go. April 24th, 2018. This is from an article in the National Review by a man named David French. It's entitled, California Progressives Launch Another Attack on Free Speech. Now, let me say before I get into this, that this is, this is an argument that can have nothing to do uh, with a Christian show. In other words, maybe even the better... Uh, point of his article is about this kind of wonky First Amendment uh, kind of free speech conversation. That's, but that's not what you're here for, and that's not what we're here to talk about. Because what I want you to understand is perilous times are ahead for Christians. And there are real challenges currently in this world from political correctness, and I understand uh, that's a political argument, but it does have uh, influence and impact on the church because uh, what those who would promote political correctness would say is, you have to agree with our version of morality, and if you state something other than our version of morality, we're going to send you to jail. Now, you may think that's overblown, but let me read to you a little bit from French's article. The California State Assembly, you can go look this up, by the way, the article is on our Facebook page. The California State Assembly is set to vote on a bill that would ban the sale of books expressing orthodox Christian beliefs about sexual morality. That is happening in this world. Assembly Bill 2943, excuse me, 2943, would make it an unlawful business practice to engage in a transaction intended to result or that results in the sale or lease of goods or services to any consumer, consumers that advertise, offer to engage in, or do engage in sexual orientation change efforts with an individual. The bill then defines sexual orientation change efforts as any practices that seek to change an individual's sexual orientation. Now listen carefully. This includes efforts to change behaviors or gender expressions or to eliminate or reduce sexual or romantic attraction or feelings toward individuals of the same sex. Now let me break that down for you because this is kind of lawyerly political nonsense talk. 
It says this includes efforts to change behaviors or gender expressions. In other words, if I say an activity is sinful and you should stop it, I'm in violation of California law. If I write a book that says it is sinful to engage in a certain sexual behavior and you should stop it, I'm in violation of the law. In fact, the entire last segment we just did on the show would be illegal under California law if this bill passes. Now, now you may sit there and think, well, preacher man, you're just, you're, you're reading too much. You're, you're, you're overthinking this situation. That's not really going to happen. And, and Lord willing, it will not. But it does matter that people in our government are trying to pass this kind of law. Listen to what one assembly member said about this issue. His name is uh, Al Maratsushi. Maratsushi. And I apologize for the, uh, not pronouncing the name properly. But he declared, it's time for the faith community to evolve with the times. Brothers and sisters, it is not time for the faith community to evolve with the times. The Bible stands alone. The Bible is true. God is unchanging. There in him there is no shadow of turning. It is society and mankind that needs to change, not God. Now, that's easy to say. It's harder to live. And let me tell you something. We live in a generation this is going to be even more difficult for our children. They live in a world with social media. They live in a world where these kind of attitudes are the accepted norm. The old shirt from the 70s that said, if it feels good, do it. This has become the morality of the world. In fact, that shirt has turned into, you can't tell me not to do it. This bill in front of the California legislature would make it illegal to define sin. Not just same-sex relationships. In the last segment, we talked about the idea of sexual immorality and adultery. It would make it sinful for a preacher to stand up and say, you cannot enter into that activity. If you're in that activity, you should stop. That is efforts to change behavior or gender expression. A couple of verses on this from the Bible, because this is not really new. The idea that what Christians stand up for uh, that is different from society is something that's gone on as long as there have been Christians. The Holy Spirit says this through Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance, the, the appearance of godliness but denying his power. Avoid such people. Let me tell you something. As Christians, it is important that we associate with godly people that we be not unequally yoked. Paul puts it plainly, avoid such people. In the same book, in chapter 4 and verse 3, 2 Timothy, it says this, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. In other words, they won't want to hear the truth. They'll actually come up with legislation to, that says, you can't preach the truth. For the time is coming, brothers and sisters, it is here. When people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. Well, guess what? That's where we are. The world doesn't want to hear about God. The world doesn't want to hear about truth. The world doesn't want to hear you shouldn't do something. They want to say, if I want to engage in that activity, who can stop me? Because they don't believe in God. And to say it's wrong, to them, it is a cultural sin to say that there is sin. To me, one of the most moving verses in the entire Bible about this very world in which we live is the second half of Romans chapter 1. If you're familiar with that text, you know that God essentially says this, that I am God and they should have been able to know it by the world around them. And there was a time which the world did know me, God, but they have left me and turned after idols and given themselves over to all kinds of sin, 
women with women, men with men, receiving in themselves the due penalty. And then not only are they wrong, but those who approve of those things are wrong as well. And in the middle of that, the Holy Spirit through Paul summarizes this transition. And it says this, and, and God is going to say this twice in these two verses. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And here's the first time, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. So in that verse, God is saying, they've exchanged me, the true God, for idols of gold and silver. Now verse 24. Therefore God gave them up to their lust, to the lust of their hearts, to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves. In other words, God allows man to make his own choice. If God wants to, if you want, if man wants to leave God and go after idols, God's not going to stop you. In verse 25, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. We live in a world that has exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And we live in a world that worships the creature, the lust of the flesh, rather than the creator. So what can I do about that? Well, we talked about in our segment on integrity, the thing that I can do is live with integrity. I can live a life where I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't engage in sexual immorality. I'm faithful to my wife in the way that God is faithful to me. Well, in this instance... I have to stand firm. I have to understand that this world is changing around us. I have to understand that what this world says is right, is wrong with God sometimes. And I have to be willing to stand with God regardless of the consequences. Preachers and churches need to stand firm and be ready to accept the consequences. To read the Word of God boldly, to realize that others will leave our churches, there is no doubt about that. They will pursue having itching ears, teachers who will tell them what they wanted to hear. But you, O oh man, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all kindness. Perform your ministry. It is up to Christians to preach the truth of God and not a lie. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 through 14, I'll leave you with this. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. Brothers and sisters, we can't change the world, but we can change our little corner of it. We can walk and live with integrity, and we can preach and know the truth of God. And don't you dare exchange it for a lie. Don't you dare exchange worship for the creature instead of worship for the creator. There is a God. May his name be praised. May his book be read. May his words be understood. May his will be lived in our life. Amen. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. That is how we will endure these wild, wild times and the winds of change blowing in and around us. May God bless us as we live a life of truth and integrity and we stand up for his word, which we know to be true. Amen? Amen. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Grace and Truth. Most people want the bad news first. So here it is. We have all sinned and deserve the wrath of God. But the good news is Jesus shed his blood and paid the price for our salvation. God gave us a sign of eternal life by raising him from the dead. His resurrection proves he's the Son of God, Christ my Lord. Come to him in faith. Be born again of water and the Spirit. Serve him and he will save you. That is the message of God. We are his servants at the North 2nd Street Church of Christ. Find out more at northsecondcfc.org. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by feedthepig.org. Well, I finally did it. I opened a 401k. So you're giving up. Just like that. Giving up on what? I'm getting an inheritance from a distant relative. 
Don't you think if there were a billionaire in the family, we'd know about it by now? Listen to me. We are one phone call away from riding horses on our own private polo grounds. One call from christening yachts, having a butler, using summer as a verb. How do you figure? Look, everyone's got a rich uncle somewhere. It's statistics. So the best thing you can do is just prepare for the inevitable. Right. Which is why I thought maybe it would be smart to take control of my finances. You know, start using a budget, get out of debt, set some retirement goals. Budgets? Debt? You watch your mouth. Retirement shouldn't be a goal for us. It should be a way of life. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. James 127 is a clear directive for Christians to help widows and orphans. We do very well helping widows, but what about orphans? Many Christian families would love to adopt, but cannot afford the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 cost. Sacred Selections is a nonprofit foundation designed to help. 100% of your donations go directly to help finance and adoption. Sacred Selections has helped 119 families adopt children. SacredSelections.org, helping Christians help the helpless. Grace and Truth is on Twitter. Follow us at Grace Truth 1400. All right, welcome back to the show. I always have a hard time talking over this song. The great Stevie Ray Vaughan doing the great Jimi Hendrix. Little Wing. Not a lot of that on your average Christian show, I got to figure. All right, well, how you doing today? Good, hopefully. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. We'll leave uh, the show on this, this note. We, we used to be able to sing this as a song. Uh, the gentleman who used to lead this song for us uh, is no longer with our congregation, and we don't have anybody who leads it. So if you're out there and you know this song, we need you to come be a song leader at North 2nd Street. Just, I'm just putting that out there. Galatians chapter 2 uh, and verse 20. And if you've heard this, you, you'll hear the tune in your mind as I read it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, yet Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, the song that we sing is out of the King James on that. Uh, and it kind of goes, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> See, there you go. That's why we need you. If you, if you know that song... And you're a song leader. We need you to come be a member uh, at North 2nd Street because it's really a cute little thing. And it speeds up, and he says it does it faster over time until everybody just kind of falls down on the floor. But here's the point. There's the point to this. We've been talking about uh, on the show a lot uh, about integrity and living with principles and, and standing up and, and, and holding strong to the faith. That's only possible if I've crucified the flesh. Because if I have not crucified the flesh, then I'm worried too much about fleshly things. Not just sinful activities around me, but this world. The more Christian I am, the less I worry about the world around me. And the less the world means to me, the easier it is to crucify it. The easier it is to criticize what I see as wrong around me. If I don't care what worldly people think, then why should I be ashamed of standing up for the truth? If I'm worried about what, this is our problem with politicians. If you're looking for a politician to save this world, to stand up for the church, brothers and sisters, you're looking in the wrong place because they don't care about you inevitably. Uh, they, they care about themselves and they care about votes. And if 52% of the country believes one thing, brother, I can tell you something, that's what that politician is going to believe. And whether it's right or wrong before God is irrelevant to them. That's because they've not crucified the world. They're not crucified to the world. They're part of the world. They care what the world thinks. They're motivated by the world. They've exchanged, talking about the last segment, the creator for the creature. But not so for the Christian. So having said all that, let me read this slowly and see how it applies. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who
who loved me and gave himself for me. Now that verse can be a little bit confusing if you're not very familiar with Christian doctrine. How is it I can crucify the flesh and live a life in the flesh? I crucify the desires of my flesh, the leading of my flesh. The life that I live in the flesh is this current physical life. I cannot escape my physical body until either the Lord comes or I die. And there will be a moment. What a, what a great thing it would be to live until the Lord comes. Amen? To see him coming on the clouds, to hear the trumpet blast. That's what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is really all about. Paul saying, don't worry, your friends have died. They'll get to see that too. For we will, we will all rise to join Christ in the air and to be with him forever. But I only do that by crucifying this world. This world can mean nothing to me. The desires of my flesh need to mean nothing to me. Christ needs to mean everything to me. Being like Jesus, everything to me. The life I live in this physical world with this physical body, I need to live it for Christ and like Christ. So have you crucified this world? Are you living to Christ? If you've never become a Christian, the obvious answer is no. Have you been baptized yet you still live in the flesh? You want to be in neither one of those positions when the Lord comes. Let's all strive to crucify our flesh more today and to live more like Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. God, our Father, the creator of this world, we look around and we see your power and your glory. We see the violence of this time of year, the, the drastic changes between cold and heat and rain and sun. And we realize that in that creative tension, you are shaking loose the spring of this world, that you are producing the crops, that you're unshielding the seed, that you're helping this world to grow and to prosper so that we might live by it, so that we may harvest, so that we may survive. Praise your name, Lord. All good things come from you. Praise your name. Thank you for the food and the air that we breathe. Lord, we come before you asking for more faith, asking that you strengthen us from the inside by the power of your spirit. Be with us, Lord. Help us not to fear this world. Help us not to care what this world says. Help us to cling closer to you. Let there be no shame in our Christianity. Let us walk with integrity. Help us to shed our lives of sin. Help us let the light of your sun shine in our life. May it ever be so, Lord. If we have things in our lives that we're holding on to, Strengthen us, Lord, to repent. Encourage us to get rid of those things, to see them as sinful before your eyes, to understand how hateful they are, how sinful they are, how obnoxious they are to the nostrils of our Savior who died on the cross so that we may not sin and help us to turn to you. Lord, we ask for prayers. We have so many that are in need of physical prayers in our congregation. We praise your name for the healthy birth of a child last week. We praise you so far for healthy pregnancies of women in our congregation. Please continue to be with them. May their families be led by godly men, served by godly women. Lord, we have those who are in need of physical prayer for struggles with emotional situations, going through change in their life, having thoughts that are difficult to deal with. Lord, please strengthen them, comfort them. Know that you're with them every day. Lord, we know that there's no sin that you cannot forgive. There's no stain which the blood of Jesus Christ cannot remove from our life. Help us to run to you. <clears throat> Help us to run to you, not from you, in times of trouble. Lord, please, with, the, with those who need physical healing, be with those who have chronic issues. 
Be with those who have cancer. We have so many around us who have cancer. Please be with them, heal them. Be with those who have broken bones. Be with those who have seasonal illnesses and sicknesses. Be with the young who are struggling. Be with the old who are struggling with loneliness. Comfort them. Be with us all, Lord. Help us to comfort one another with the comfort we receive from you. Lord, we ask for prayers for the young lady who's leaving us and going to another state to live with a family as she deals with her health issues. Please comfort and strengthen her. We thank you for the spirit that she's given us at Second Street. Lord, please send us sinners and workers. Help us to realize we are sinners and help us to work. Please forgive us of our sins, Lord. We know that we stand sinful before you. We praise your name. We beg for forgiveness. We beg that we might stand righteous before you through Jesus' blood and not our own. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Had a lot on my mind there. Sorry, I could have prayed for another five minutes. May God be with you today. If you're not a Christian, come see us. We'd love to tell you about Jesus. We'd love to tell you about the salvation, the peace, the reconciliation, the forgiveness that's found through the blood of Jesus Christ. Be baptized in faith today. Repent from your life lived in your will. Turn to the will of God. You will be saved. You will be saved. You will be being saved. You will be saved at the second coming. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us. This is Grace and Truth Radio. Hey, as always, if you're listening to us on Sunday, worship starts at 10, man. Put on your shoes, brush your teeth. Come see us at 782 North 2nd Street. We meet there. We're a congregation of God's people in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Till next time, we'll see you right here. In the Bible, the word for church simply means a group of people. The Church of Christ that meets on North 2nd Street in Clarksville is just that. We're a group.